Dunfermline. Airdrie and Hibernian already through to the semi-finals of the Skull Cup to be joined now by either Hearts or Rangers. Hearts the only team to score against Rangers all season. That stunning early goal here two and a half weeks ago from Scott Crabb. The quarter to Andy Gorham off his guard and uh, Scott Nisbet has to step in to prevent any sort of uh, repeat performance. Gordon the Queen alongside me. Good evening, Gordon. Good evening, Martin. I know you're uh, still uh, very close friends with Joe Jordan, the Hearts manager. Can you enlighten us really on their strategy? Well, I think similar to Rangers. I mean, Walter Smith's put a surprise on us tonight with putting Ali McCoy in and place a place a hoistra, but Rangers front three will play exactly the way the Hearts front three do. And the one of them, Ian Baird, almost getting the ball through to another John Robertson. They play Ian Baird through the middle with John Robertson either wide in the left or wide in the right, interchanging with Scott Knapp. And I think that's what Rangers are going to attempt to do tonight, and I'm sure he's it's a tactical decision, and he's taken into consideration the recent, the recent defeat at Tynecastle, their only defeat this season. That's Ian Baird's raw physical approach, almost designed to clear the defenders out of the way so that John Robertson and Scott Crabb can sneak in and get the goals, although Baird hasn't been short in that department so far with three already this season. Five from Robertson, three from Crabb. You can see where the threat is to Rangers, the holders, of course, of the Skull Cup. Ian Ferguson has presented it straight to Baird. Here's Robertson. Gary Mackay goes to the right of him, Ian Baird through the centre. He's just taken it a little wide, but he's got a corner. And that will be the signal for the likes of McPherson to join Baird and Hogg as well. It's only Hogg's third match for Hearts. He made a goal in his first, he got sent off in his second. He's the number two. McPherson going towards the near post as well, and it's Hogg who dumped it on, Baird was poised to strike there. Toss McKinley. And again. And McCoist lets it run. Well, it's been a very promising start by Hearts, and it's something Rangers will have to watch out for tonight, the aerial threat from Hearts at set pieces with David McPherson, and of course the inclusion of Graham Hogg, who's very dangerous in these situations as well. And they'll need all Mark Bentley and Richards got Goss aerial power in defensive situations to curb that threat. Hakley will try and keep Hogg and McPherson occupied at the back. In theory, uh, Dave McPherson is the free defender with Levine and Hogg the marker. That's not the way it is at the moment. As uh, in the end, Craig Levine got there before Mo Johnston. And they're still really sorting things out at Hearts at the back. Good header by Nisbet. Hately, who's been in mature form, either side of a collarbone problem, which was enough to keep him out for 10 days or so. Nisbet doing well against Baird. Ian Ferguson to Gary Stevens, who was disappointed to learn earlier in the week that he's not in the England squad. McCall, who's one of six Rangers, called up by Andy Roxburgh for Scotland. But this is the sort of cut tie atmosphere that everyone anticipated here. Yeah, the crowd are buzzing already, and um, as we said, Hearts have started off very well, taking the game to Rangers so far in this early part of the game. And Robertson reacting quickly to the throw from Mackay. Only hate the upfield for Rangers, and McPherson, a former Rangers player himself, strides on! Those Rangers supporters who wonder why Dave McPherson was ever allowed to leave Ibrox for Tynecastle. That was a cracking effort. A 
boisterous opening five minutes in this quarter-final, the last of the four quarter-finals of this year's Skull Cup. Ferguson has got the better of McKinley, Crabb was behind, but Ferguson goes again. As he was challenged by McPherson, and it was enough to produce a corner. I don't think there's any real malice in this tackle of David McPherson as they slid in. Ian Ferguson bravely went for the ball and then maybe a bit unfortunately they got a free kick awarded against him because Ian Ferguson did get the ball across the goals although Henry Smith picked it up. Well it's going to be a corner in fact Gordon although I must say the replay didn't suggest any great deflection. Headed back by McCall and it's an offside now against Hakley who was uh, hoping to look along the line there and stay level which of course is legal. Mark Hakeley, whose season ended so magnificently last season with those two championship winning goals in the final Premier League game. He started with a hat-trick in the opening day of this season. And he's been doing well in the early aerial exchanges, but he's got to sustain that the way Hearts play it. The sheer resources of a Rangers football club really make them favourites wherever they play, but this is no easy ride for them here. Johnston delivered with some perception from McCoyce, hungry to make an impact after the time on the bench, which he's accepted with typical good humour, but he knows it can't go on for too long for his career. So this is a big night for Alan McCoyce. He is in the uh, Scotland party. Andy Roxburgh has kept faith with him. And uh, apart from being a good player, he's a good tourist as well. Yeah, very much so. But as we're saying about the aerial threat of Ian Baird and Mark Haitley, it looks as though Graham Hogg's got the Haitley job to do tonight. And, and young Scott Nisbet has the job of marking Ian Baird. Back from Hogg, who played... Uh, around 100 games in Manchester United's first team. The fact that speaks for itself. And Robertson getting in in front of John Robertson in front of David Robertson. Mackay staying wide on the right of Joe Jordan's four-man midfield. So John Miller, the Hearts number 10, has been uh, deputed now to dog the footsteps of Ali McCoyce. Yeah, well, John Miller is a defensive midfield player, but certainly not played as deep as that in any of Hearts games this season so far. But he's got a job, as you say, a Mark and Ali McCoyce, McCoyce tonight. Very popular choice with the Rangers fans because when his name was read out in the team sheet, there was a huge roar from this big Rangers support here. McCoyce right from the middle. Hakeley gets to it, this is Johnston jumping, Ian Ferguson shooting, it hit McKinley who turned his back, maybe around the arm, but he wasn't even looking at the ball, so it could hardly have been deliberate. No, referee Hawke got this one 100% right. Tosh McKinley in the backside, as you say, his back was turned to the, to the shot. And I think I'd turn my back if Ian Ferguson was shooting as well. He's got a very powerful right foot. Baird. Bundled down by Stevens. Baird quickly on his feet and anxious to get into the centre. Where he might cause some mayhem at the free kick. Which is to be taken by McKinley. That's Hogg fighting for it. With Goff. Rangers complaining that Richard Goff was fouled. 
but it's going to be a corner. We talked about the Davy McPherson's connection with Rangers. We shouldn't uh, forget Derek Ferguson either, who's taking the corner for Hearts. It's Levine jumping. Here's Mackay. Person trying to guide it down. David Robertson doing the defending. Scott Kraft trying to bring some width into the play with McPherson's help. A lot of energy and initiative from Hart. Miller is Hately having to uh, come back everyone for Rangers behind the ball as Hogg delivered dead full of commitment Gordon you were talking about the Rangers support which is as impressive wherever they play but of course the uh, Hearts will outnumber them here tonight and they have uh, partisan followers of their own yeah, well, they've, they've got the bulk of the support tonight, and I think they're beginning to realise that Joe John's beginning to achieve things here at Tynecastle. They've had a magnificent start to the season, and Joe hasn't had the greatest deal of money um, at Hearts. The money seems a bit tight here, and um, they must be delighted with the job that he's doing so far. A, a smashing start. Yes, well, they won their first six games of the season, including the two skull ties. And then Drew here in the Edinburgh Derby against Hibs last Saturday. A frenetic afternoon. McCoy pressed by his marker Miller. Free transfer from Blackburn Rovers. Ian Baird's first season in Scotland. He was an England schoolboy international, born in England, but his father's Scottish, and he quickly feels part of the scene up here. And the call, another of a similar background. Ian Ferguson. Gary Stevens has got forward well here. Oh, and Baird, sometimes strikers in their own penalty area can be a nuisance. <laughs> well, very nearly fell into that category that's for, then. That's for sure. I think Ian Baird should have been looking to clear that one. David Robertson right up his back here. Took a little bit of a chance trying to pull it down for Henry Smith. And just got away with it. Henry Smith was very quick to react. Here's McKinley. Nisbet couldn't be sure and let that run to Andy Gorham. McCall. Ferguson looking early for Hately. And he held the ball on to McCoy. Johnson in the centre. Hately joining him. He likes the ball played into that channel, Mark Hately. He's naturally left sided. David Livingston is our touchline reporter. Again tonight, and David, uh, your first thoughts from your berth on the far side. Martin, uh, Rangers number two, Archie Knox, has been very vocal in the opening stages. He's telling Ali McCoy and Morris Johnston to continually switch their uh, markers, and he's telling the back men that they must get more diagonal balls going forward. Not all the Rangers supporters arrived here in time for the kickoff. Still making their way into the stadium. Not easy to get off work in time for the away matches. Smith uh, musing on the events of the uh, opening 15 minutes from his seat in the stand. Whatever happens, Rangers have made a better start here than they did in the league meeting. And at this stage, they were already a goal adrift, a goal that they never redressed. 
Craig Levine to take the free kick for Hearts. Hogg has joined Baird and McPherson as likely targets. And well met by Nisbet. Back with Levine again. McKinley. Now Miller, who is naturally left-footed. Crab screening, you can see what was in his mind to try and uh, reverse the ball there for McKinley. It nearly came off the heart. Ian Ferguson's given it away. And it's wholehearted attack from the home side. Corona conceded by Gary Stevens. And Ian Ferguson still uh, conducting the apologies having rather uncharacteristically presented the ball to the heart's right. Yeah, it was a terrible pass for Ian Ferguson here, but I must say that Scott Nisbet's handled the, a cup, the aerial threat of Ian Baird very well in this first 15 minutes. Hogg and McPherson wait at the near post. And Levine coming in from deeper. It's Levine shot. And there was no uh, offside then. In fact, uh, McCoy's too clear was playing everybody on. McKinley, promising moments again from the home team. Baird, in from Mackay, oh Crabbe had got free with that movement towards the near post. It's really just trying to help the header on. Levine, Crabbe full of running again, has taken Goff with him. Mackay able to drive in the cross, was just deflected behind John Robertson. And all uh, McCall can do is hammer it forward. And Rangers did have two up, so that Hearts couldn't immediately transfer the ball straight back again, which is what they're trying to do now. Well, John Robertson throwing his weight about, he hasn't too much of it. Well, as expected, the game's very competitive, and as we said, Hatch taking the game to Rangers, and Rangers then defending desperately at times. But I think tonight we're looking at probably the two most dangerous front lines in Scottish football at the moment. And part of the appeal of this competition is that the matches have to be decided on the first night. Rangers could, if they were so inclined, play for penalties that's certainly not in their nature but a draw is not in the equation McKinley Goff's got to be sure of this John Robertson buzzing behind him well it's the first time in the match Rangers have knocked the ball about at the back I mean that's something they love to do build up from the back but the Hearts front three have been so busy, they've just not been allowed to do that so far. Levine jumping well. And Paul only able to make something for himself, really. <laughs> With no disrespect to the other three semi-finalists in this competition, one would think that the favourites would be the team that wins tonight when we get to the last four. Oh, Johnston. When, uh, well, he was in a position where Hearts probably should have played him offside, but they didn't. And here's Crowd with a run against Goff. Help for Rangers from Nisbet. And Derek Anderson has covered a lot of ground to arrive here. Bad goes in. And claims that he was nudged by Goff in the act of trying to squeeze the header in. Well, this is another great move started by Tosh McKinley again on the left-hand side. He knocks it to Crabbe and a delightful ball across to Derek Ferguson. And a strong challenge by Richard Goff that just puts Ian Baird off at the last minute. It's a great mixture of skill and strength, this cup tie already. Hearts really prepared to stretch their lungs and their legs to try and dominate against most experts' choice as the best club team in Scotland. Yeah, that was a nice touch there by Scott Crabbe. Have you seen the, 
there was a chance of him getting walloped there in the tackle. He dived over the tackle and then told the referee that the Rangers player made, made no connection whatsoever. A terrific 20 minutes at Tyne Castle. It's Hearts nil, Rangers nil. McKinley. Ferguson trying to force him wide, doing it unfairly. Well, I'm sure the Hearts bench will be hoping Tosh McKinley gets up from this one. Ian Ferguson, yeah, well, he's a little bit late there. And maybe a bit fortunate he's not getting booked. And as I said, the Hearts bench will be hoping Tosh McKinley gets up from this tackle. Because he's been, he's been making some smashing runs down the left-hand side and putting good crosses into the box as well. We did wonder, Gordon, whether McKinley would be given the, the extra marking job. He uh, has played in there for Joe Jordan before, but John Miller has been recruited almost in the kick-in to uh, pick yeah. up Ali McCoy. Yeah, well, I think we felt before the game, out of the two, it probably would be Tosh McKinley, because as you said, he's played in that position earlier in the season. But I'm sure Joe's made the right decision, because John Miller's keeping Ali, quite, Ali McCoy's quite quiet just now, and as I've just said, Tosh McKinley's making some good, strong runs down this left-hand flat, and causing Rangers a fair few problems, and Ian Ferguson in particular in that incident. And Rangers won't want to give away free kicks in uh, this type of position. It's a strong card that Hearts can play. Their power in the air. And McKinley can exact quick retribution if he plants this free kick right for the home side. Derek Ferguson on the chest. Hogg. That's John Robertson. Well saved by Gorham who's had some problems playing for Hibs against Hearts on this ground. Well, as usual, a big flick on here by Graham Hogg. Does it quite get away? And John, John Robertson, in the right, the right place at the right time, strikes the ball quite nicely, but doesn't get past Andy Gorham, something he's done a lot of in the hip part starters. David Robertson. Bounced off Johnston's knees, really. shortage of uh, high-class attackers in this game wherever you look Haitley and it's McCoyst oh and Johnston actually was following in celebrating McCoyst was looking to loop it yeah it looks very much like a goal this one David Robertson who's got an extremely long throw and Matt Caitlin the head flick jo Morris Johnson flicks on and Ali a clever little header he knew he couldn't get power behind it he just tried to loop it over the top of Henry Smith and it just trickled past the left hand post and an indication there that the three of them can play together but here's Baird for a buccaneering break and David Robertson covering well to the rescue for Rangers well, I think defenders are really have to, going to have to be in their toes tonight. Good defensive covering by David Robertson here as the ball looked as if it was getting past Richard Goff. Well, it stayed in play. The referee looked to the linesman who's on the far side. Up goes Hogg, and now it is a goal kick. Well, big Graham Hogg there lending his weight for the attack game. As, we, as I mentioned earlier, Joe hasn't had a great deal of money to spend. But what he spent, he spent very wise with it. It's the Hearts fans' first look at Graham Hogg tonight, and I'm sure they were delighted with the investment Joe Jordan's made in him. And you know all about him from your days at Manchester United, Gordon. Yes, yeah, so I've seen him at close quarters, and he can play. Very unlucky not to play in the English FA Cup final in 1985. And he'd been a regular for much of the season. He lost out to Kevin Moran, who was sent off in that final. Manchester United won, as I'm sure you all remember. It's back. David Robertson to reach Hakeley. Oh, it's a lovely duck from McCoy. It's a terrific goal for Rangers. Christ is back with a bang. In the 25th minute, he can scarcely believe it himself. 
Well, this justifies Walter Smith's decision to leave House Trout and put Johnston in. Just when I thought Graham Hogg was doing a terrific marking job in Hatley. Lovely little flick in here. Ali wheels and smashes a terrific right-hand shot down into the bottom right-hand corner. Gave Henry Smith no chance at all. Great strike. Half a yard on John Miller, as you saw then. And that was enough for Ali McCoyst. Always the favourite of the fans. The management will point out that he needed an operation in the uh, summer, but he didn't return for pre-season 100% fit, and that's why they've had to ease him back into the picture. He is back. Top on Hearts, who'd been uh, directing the traffic for typical of Rangers. Mark Hakeley using the inside of his head as well as the outside. Well, just when you think the goal. Just when you think Hearts were taking a grip of the game, up pops Ali and scores a terrific goal. But really, they've got such a potent attack, Rangers. You really, you re really can't take your eye off them for a moment. Said, which wasn't what was intended. Backman uh, steers it back. Well, it looks a good selection so far for Walter Smith. Stevens, good advantage played. It was a buffeting challenge on Gary Stevens by Craig Levine. Looks as though Stephen's header was going to uh, give Mo Johnston a prominent part to play in that attack. And that's what the referee uh, took into account. Gary Stevens has got up and got on with the game. No, I don't think there was any malice in David Robertson's, in David Robertson's part there. But I think possibly the, the Hearts midfield have had the edge on the, on the what I would consider stronger midfield of Rangers. Nisbet. Scott Nisbet is one of the survivors from uh, a Skull Cup semi-final three years ago between these two sides. 3-0 it finished to Rangers and Nisbet was a goal scorer then. And of course uh, we shouldn't forget that he was signed as a striker. He's been impressive form so far this season for Hibs. I mean everybody thought obviously Kuznetsov is going to take over that role. But so far he hasn't proved his fitness and Scott Nisbet's filled the slot nicely. Johnston. McCoyst coming into the middle. Oh, and Hakeley. It seemed to me that Mark Hakeley called for that. McCoyst might have got to it and veered out of the way at the last minute. Well, this front three popping up all over the place is causing Hart's problems as well. Terrific cross for Mo Johnson, a diving header for Mark Hakeley, who had lost Graham Hogg there. Just knocks it past the left hand post. Rangers might not be getting uh, the greatest share of the ball in midfield, but as long as they get it up to the front end from the back, it doesn't seem to matter too much. Crowd. And this bit complaining that uh, Crab wasn't blameless. Very competitive player, Scott Nisbet. But there really wasn't a great deal in this one. But it's put Hearts in a, a terrific position here. foot of Craig Levine that nearly diverted the ball to the embarrassment of Gorham. Bravely won by Baird. McKinley. Room for Ferguson. Room to shoot. I think you're going to have to hit them a little bit harder than that to get past Andy Gorham. Uh, 
certainly felt John Miller then if he didn't see him. Hey, clip. So much movement for Rangers when they do get the ball forward, particularly since the goal. Stevens. Easily past McKinley. Oh, and Johnston was unlucky. It was going to run well for him until it struck the heel. There's no offside. Oh, and Gorham got to get to it cleanly and did. And uh, an excellent clearance. A fine pass to Johnston. Difficult for goalkeepers now. Yeah, well, Andy Gorham was very alert in that situation there because John Robertson timed his run perfectly here. Luke's yards offside here, but he was he was running onto the ball, defenders running out. And as we see, Andy Gorham react, reacted very quickly indeed. Fourteen minutes left in the first half. The first half that's been a joy to watch. Gary Mackay and Henry Smith are in the losing side at the moment. They're jumping with the elbow cocked. Yeah, it's been a bit of a feature of the game so, so far, the battle between um, Nisbet and Baird. And I think probably Scott Nisbet's just coming out on top at this moment. wanting some help from his teammates to be told he hesitated momentarily but fortunately for him so too did Johnston Backman getting the better of Baird Hakeley gets there ahead of McPherson McCoyce on the far side coming to the near post now leaving Johnston at the far post and uh, helpful Rangers from McCall. <laughs> well defended by Miller. And of course, they hate Well, they could have taken their pick then. But John Miller was marking that area. Some good, good defensive, good defending there by the Hearts players. Because Gary Stevens clipped in a delightful ball that was well headed away. And then Levine headed one away in a dangerous situation with Mo Johnston and Hart, Mark Haitley bearing down on him. Rangers with this uh, fantastic record in the Skull Cup. One defeat in 27 ties. And that was the final a couple of years ago against Aberdeen. McCall. <laughs> Referee not helping Ian Ferguson. Mackay. Derek Ferguson has made a great run in behind Rages. Was lined up by John Robertson. The first shirt tug, tugging by Derek Ferguson. Yeah, the whole, the, the whole game's very evenly matched just now. Very competitive. Midfield players, no, no, not one player really stamping his authority in the middle of the park so far in the game. It's all about the defenders battling with forwards so far. Nisbet. For once, the three up front for Rangers, all in a line. And uh, that's why the one ball took all of them out. That's always a risk when you play three up, but they haven't fallen into uh, that positional trap too often. Well, we heard from David Livingston uh, when it was level pegging. Uh, David, down on the touchline, how are Rangers reacting now they're in front? 
Martin, uh, not a lot happier, I'm afraid. Uh, despite the goal, they're, they're continually on to the midfield saying that they haven't even started playing yet. Uh, Stuart McCall has taken it in the neck because he's nearest the dugout here. But uh, they have yet again switched the front three. Uh, they told Mo Johnson to go to the right and move uh, Mark Hately left and then McCoy's in the middle. So it's going to be continually switched throughout the game. John Robertson. Andy Gorham. Really looks better and better each time you see him. Yeah, it, it, it really is. Well, international class, as we all know. I mean, he just goes about his business so confidently. Great pair of hands. They must be a delight for the defenders, having him behind them. But he will be worried, I think, about John Robertson. I had a look in the record books, and I make it nine league goals that uh, Robertson put past Gorham when it was Hearts v Hibs. Including the very first goal that Andy Gorham conceded in Scotland. Yeah, he's quite partial to scoring against Hibs. But I think John Robertson is probably, arguably, the most clinical finisher in the Premier League. He's also uh, not averse to claiming any final touches as well. <laughs> we found one goal this season that the record books seem to have down to Scott Crabb, but officially here at Hearts, it's now Robertson's. A mere deflection from a Crabb shot in the Skull Cup. Free kick to Rangers. This is always a difficult one for referees to judge. Does Matt Cately attempt to play the ball or just back into Graham Hogg, who climbs all over the top of him? I'll give the benefit of the doubt to the centre-half. <laughs> and we know how you earned your living. <laughs> so it is Nigel Spackman. McCoy's trying to get free. Nisbet as well. McCall. Away by Hogg. Nodded back by Goff Hart for pulling, pushing out in a coordinated fashion. Oh, a foot raised by McCoy. It's the sort of decision that always gets given if you're a regular viewer of our Italian coverage on Sky Sports. It's more of a continental refereeing approach indirect free kick dangerous play by McCoist McCall there was a spell uh, earlier in the half when Gary Mackay and Derek Ferguson were causing a lot of problems to Rangers on that far side of the field Ferguson's offside. And that was a pity there. It was a terrific run through by Derek Ferguson, but unfortunately Ian Baird was in an offside position. Great break by Derek Ferguson. At times he's run right, but as you can see Ian Baird there on the right-hand side of the pitch are in an offside position. Hakeley just <laughs> got it to David Robertson. It was probably just a bit too close to him to be able to control it. Goff. But it's going to be an offside decision rather than a throw. Hakeley for once a little slow getting back. Baird wanting the ball every time when it comes long. But Goff's aware of that. Oh, that's excellent play by Derek Ferguson. It was outskilling Richard Goff, really. Yeah, obviously <laughs> close teammates at one time, but Derek Ferguson very unhappy about that one. Good, powerful header by Richard Goff initially, but maybe just a little bit late getting in there with Derek Ferguson. And just a warning from referee Hope. Five minutes to go to half-time. 
It would be most timely for Hearts if they could fashion an equaliser here. And Gorham is in command again. Yeah, no problem this one for Andy Gorman. John Robertson makes a... Scott Crabb makes a challenge here and Andy Gorham. Maybe it would have been better if it had been Ian Baird, but Andy Gorham collected it cleanly. Better for whom, Gordon? <laughs> <laughs> Certainly not for Andy Gorham. <laughs> and he's built to look after himself, the uh, new Rangers goalkeeper. Hakely. McCall very aware that that ball might come into his path. Didn't quite master it. When you cost more than a million pounds and you're handed the shirt worn by Trevor Stephen, a settling in process can be difficult, but Stuart McCall has his own brand of quality. And he's trying to respond now to uh, the comments that David Livingstone was advising us about earlier from Archie Knox for the Rangers midfield to get active. There was an interesting point David made because really Stuart McCall really hasn't been involved in, a, in any great way in the first half so far. McCoy breaks for Stevens. And Levine a little quicker to react than Johnston on that occasion. Oh, that's superbly played by Scott Crabb. Mackay. McCall. Very anxious to please and keeping Hearts at bay in midfield on that occasion after a delightful touch of skill from Crabb to uh, change direction and uh, come up with the ball and on his feet as well. Hatley. Johnston! A touch on the stretch might have been sufficient. The ball just breaks to Mark Haley here. Big stride forward, sticks a delightful ball in with his left foot that Mo Johnson well must have been inches away from that one. But cleanly held by Henry Smith. Hatley, a surge from Spackman. Flying kind from McPherson with help from Mackay. Mackay again, third by Ferguson. Goff got to the ball. Although uh, he dumped Crab down as he did so. Hearts supporters still remembering the earlier challenge on Derek Ferguson, which clearly was a foul. But on this occasion, Richard Goff, although he might have been showing a stud or two as he went in, the contact first and foremost was with the ball. It's good to see Scott Crabb fulfilling the potential of a couple of years ago. He had a uh, an illness, some food poisoning last season that really weakened him physically and Hearts didn't see the best of him. With half-time upon us, any check on Crabbe's fitness of a serious nature can wait until the half-time break. Taken on by Spackman. A 
And Nigel Spatman for a moment thought the ball might rebound into play from the corner flag. Has in fact rolled out for a throw, another chance for David Robertson to get some good distance here. With Haitley in particular to aim for. Haitley got to it. Ian Ferguson. And he put his foot up towards the ball. I think Douglas Hope sharing his FIFA pedigree as an official. It's half time at Time Castle. A very energetic first half here. Barks have plenty to play, particularly early on. But they've run into the return of Ali McCoist, who's ended a sequence of five games for Hearts without conceding a goal when he popped up in the 25th minute to fire in a delightful flick from Mark Hakelin. Coming up after the break, that terrific action from last night and the shock of the Skull Cup, Celtic going out at edge. Thank you, Richard. Scott Crabb has come out for the second half with that right hand that was damaged in the challenge with Richard Goff just before half-time. Swathed in bandages there. And Douglas Hope, the referee, just checking that it conformed the strapping to the regulations. So Rangers start the second half. Joe Jordan has worked very hard with Hearts to improve their defence this season. Last season they were leaking goals in the Premier League, but it's his attackers he'll be looking to now to try and keep Hearts in the Skull Cup. looking to uh, see where his strikers were. They didn't react to the uh, flick on his fellow strikers. Well, we can uh, find out the details of Scott Crabbe's injury with David Livingston on the touchline. David Robertson, a scorer a week ago, and looking still to be a provider here, rather than drive directly for goal, which he might have been entitled to do. Yeah, terrific at pushing forward, David Robertson. He doesn't have to put this one across, a defender's nightmare here. And now Rangers have a corner. Really nothing to choose between the two sides in the first half, and I don't see it being any different this half. Really, Rangers just found one chink in the half's defence and punished it and Hearts haven't found the chink to the Rangers so far, the Rangers defence so far in this game. And watching uh, McCoy's goal again at half-time, it really was a, a marvellous shot with the ball spinning, in fact, away from the goal as he wrapped his right foot into the shot. Easy for Henry Scott. Here's Crabbe. John Robertson through the centre. Bowled over by Ian Ferguson. Well, I think Hearts will be a little bit disappointed here. The referee never waved the advantage rule. Because Hearts were in a strong attacking position at the time. Miller. Coist helping out on the right-hand side for Rangers. It's Derek Ferguson. And painfully into the line of the shot was Nisbet. Hogg. Everything ahead of him. Baird. Supported well by Tosh McKinley, and Goff slapping it out of blow.
McPherson. They just can play on the break here. Hearts have committed a number of players forward. They've got the three uh, centre-backs back. Supported as well by Miller, who's not able to prevent Johnston releasing the pass. In behind McKinley for Ian Ferguson. One wonders whether Mark Hatley at 29 will uh, regain a place in the England setup. He hasn't played for his country since the European Championships in 1988, which were a disaster for England. Ian Ferguson. Oh, it was a worthy effort. Well, we mentioned David Robertson's throw in, but Gary Stevens is not so bad either. Graham Hogg just gets his head to it, but Ian Ferguson just skies it over the bar. Normally, normally very good in those situations, because as we mentioned earlier, he's got a very strong and powerful right foot. Flicked off Miller, who was jumping with Hatley. seat of his pants by Miller <laughs> Alexei Mikhailichenko still waiting to appear in a senior game for the first time for Rangers he has played against Hearts though in a reserve match Well, I think certainly everybody in Scotland is looking forward to seeing the Russians playing, but the question is, will we get into this Rangers side the way they're performing at the moment? Hopefully not getting the decision that time. Not really launching himself into the jump. Nisbet. Rangers with the cushion of a 1 0 lead, but it's not a comfortable cushion. Pratt, McKinley. Bad trying to cash in on a moment's hesitation from Rangers at the back. Still having to play this way with three markers, which in effect is leaving them one short of the hoped for four in midfield. Johnston, and Miller, who is the man who's been pulled back, back in his own penalty area again, with McCoyst in his sights. McCoyst has got clear once, and that's why Rangers lead. John Roberts, Mackay. <laughs> Batman was caught after the ball had gone. Well, I think so, so far this evening, the referee's had an excellent match. He's, he's let the game flow, and I think every decision so far he's got right. reading Hately's mind and the outcome was very nearly a spectacular second for Rangers well a little ball in for Richard Goff here Mark Hately, a delightful layoff and Stuart McCall doesn't have to thump this one very oh. close indeed it's 
not a prolific goal scorer from midfield but he can point to some contributions in uh, cup ties in England he got two goals at Wembley in the 89 FA Cup final as Everton were beaten 3-2 by Liverpool Hock Mackay Baird making it run he hoped for Derek Ferguson Gorham reacting as if he was sure it would have been a corner push on bad hearts haven't won a major trophy since they took this League Cup back in 1962 but if they could recover here against Rangers they would fancy their chances in the semi-final which lacks Celtic which lacks Aberdeen which lacks Dundee United if Hearts got through it would lack Rangers as well David Robertson well it's been a very even start to the second half David Livingston has been keeping tabs on the mood on the Hearts bench Martin, Joe Jordan has said very little during the game, but the one thing he seems to be uh, concentrating on now is telling Dave McPherson to get forward for set pieces, not just corners, but uh, he held up that free quick uh, to let Dave, for Dave McPherson get forward. So I think that's going to be a significant thing in the second half. The stoppage caused by the injury to Derek Ferguson, who had a habit when he was a Rangers player of making the headlines for the wrong reasons but seems to be uh, maturing here and hearts are getting the benefit of that and there's the other former ranger that david livingston was referring to davy mcpherson Substitutes for Hearts, George Wright, the reserve defender, and Steve Penny, the Northern Ireland international, there's Wright. Steve Penny, who has had a torrid time with injuries, and missed the last two English seasons with his club, Brighton. But Joe Jordan's brought him north to give him another chance. He's actually played in the Hearts first team this season but for little more than five seconds recently against St Johnston. David Robertson's cross. Dealt with by McPherson. John Robertson. Oh, uh, the waterfall on the other side. Easy to spot from up here. Desperately difficult from down there. McKinley, crab to the left. Into the feet of uh, Robertson, which is how he likes the service to be. And uh, Derek Ferguson trying to get involved as the attack continued. But Rangers came up with the answer. I don't think Scott Nisbet was too pleased with Nigel Spikeman there. He was wishing he would cl had cleared it earlier. And Scott Nisbet finally booted it away and took the pressure off. Levine, Hearts still can keep a patient approach 
have done well enough in the game to feel that they might make something by sticking to their back and flat rather than going hell for leather and giving Rangers the chance to get a second by over committing their resources forward McKinley Baird mm. was he looking for Mackay maybe he didn't find him and there's four up for Rangers four back for Hutz McCoyce uh, McPherson and Mackay between them stopping the incision that McCoyce was trying to make towards Hakelick McCaw Johnston on the right Hakelick going to the near post and uh, Johnston lost his balance seemed to take his eye off the ball but at the end of it all he's got a corner <laughs> We well, mentioned Steve Penny there, he has, a, he has another option for Joe Jordan if things aren't going well. I know it's a bit early in the second half so far, but he's a player that likes to run at defenders in wide, possession, wide, wide positions. And he's always a, an option for Joe Jordan if he feels his front three aren't inflicting any great threat to the Rangers back four. Johnston to take the corner, McCoist right in on the goal line. Well, Smith had to come through the crowd. Yeah, great catch there by Henry Smith, and he must be absolutely delighted with his form this season and a, a great boost for him getting into the Scotland set-up for the important game in Bern next week against Switzerland. Uh, just careful how he falls on that damaged hand. Yeah, well, it's maybe just a little bit far out, because normally Scott Crabb will hit them from anywhere from 25 to 30 yards, but I think this one is just too far, and I would expect Derek Baird just need to try and find one of the big boys, the personal Levina in the back. Off goes Baird. And here comes McKinley. Well, the delivery to Tosh McKinley wasn't into the stride. And Rangers are going to make a change. Ali McCoy, who, of course, has been... Short match practice has played his part, and the fresh legs provided by the Dutchman Peter Houstra with some 28 minutes left. If it's settled here in 90 minutes, up a little early and that put off Nisbet and Ian Baird as I said earlier it's a raw approach that he adopts he does run the gauntlet with referees he's no stranger to the yellow card well just a little bit of a tussle between Baird he climbs over the top, top of Scott Nisbet and really the first time I've seen any bad temper here tonight because the game, although competitive, has been played in good spirit. But he is a physical player, um, Ian Baird, and he doesn't um, ask for any quarter. And he'll just have to curb that natural aggression that really is a major part of his makeup. Baird goes for the ball and gets it decisively just out of play now the marking has changed Gordon hasn't it the house just being picked up by Gary Mackay which leaves Miller free from individual responsibilities to go into midfield and here's McCall and Halstra has lost Mackay Johnston Here's Goff. Good play from David Robertson. Even more. Hart 
so we'll just have to hold it until they can get the troops forward. Crab, as his name suggests, having to go sideways. Mackay. Now Levine. Hearts content to probe. Well, they're trying to uh, pass their way through, and uh, the time is perhaps approaching, Gordon, when uh, the uh, direct method might have to be employed. Yeah, I think they might have to start taking chances, uh, because really, uh, Scott Nisbet and Richard Goff are handling everything Hearts, that can, Hearts can throw at them, and I think we'll see now that David McPherson pushing a forward a lot more. side coming infield to make the pass even more possible and offside against Stevens we were talking earlier about Gary Stevens disappointment at being left out of the uh, England setup in favor of Lee Dixon and Gary Charles well he's a player I've seen an awful lot of up here in Scotland and really uh, I believe it's Lee Dixon that's keeping him out of the England side at the moment well all I can say is Lee Dixon must be some player Good run by Gary Stevens there, just Peter Houstra delayed his pass a little that second too much. One thing's for sure, there'll be no histrionics from Gary Stevens. He'll get on with the job and try and prove Graham Taylor that he's worth a recall. Frank Connor, the volatile half of the combination at the top for Hearts. Frankman driving the ball in, it was judged well by Haitley, whose dummy took Houster in the end by surprise. Mark Haitley knows his trade in there so well. Nisbet has come up to lend weight to the Rangers' attack here at Houster's corner. On Haitley and Nisbet. The breathing space that the Rangers are reaching out for was almost at their disposal then. This was a great chance. Matt Haitley knocks it back across the goal and Scott Nisbet. Well, that was a glorious chance to put Rangers well in front. Maybe takes his eye over the ball, knocks it over the bar instead of a downward header. The key to it was the reaction of a couple of his teammates there, Gordon, putting their hands to their heads, recognising that there haven't been that many opportunities against this very committed half side. Hakeley. Mackay for half. Johnston always staying right of Mark Hayflick, looking to roll it through to Ferguson. Spackman. Levine realised he could just cut across fairly in front of Johnston. Well, we'd mentioned the tussle between Scott Nisbet and Ian Baird, but there's a terrific one going on at the other end as well between Graham Hogg and Mark Hayflick. It's been great stuff. Johnston certainly came off the sore of the two in that confrontation with Levine. He's come off the pitch as well. If Johnston cannot continue, it will be the signal for Alexei Mikhailichenko. 
house jump. Hopefully he wants it played early. He's still free at the far post. Houster couldn't contribute the elevation. Johnston is back on. It's only as far as McCall. And Johnson's offside. Beyond Craig Levine. Well, I think the Rangers dugout will be pleased with this one. Hart's making a substitution now. Steve Penny coming on for John Roberts. Is it John Roberts? Yeah, it looks as if they're going to play with a wide player now. But I think the Rangers dugout would have been would have been a little bit frightened if Johnson had to go off because if Hearts do get an equaliser, the left and, and, and the game goes to the extra time, they get no substitutes there. John Roberts a little surprised, but it was Richard Goff, I think, that told him he had to go. But this is a gamble for Joe Jordan to take off his leading scorer and bring on a player who's fighting for his future in the game. Steve Penny, who played 17 times for Northern Ireland at full international level, naturally wide on the right, but he's had so many hopes dashed over the last couple of years, and he's not appeared at this level of the game. Here's McKinley, looking to force a corner unsuccessfully. I think Joe was right to make a substitution there, because really, the Rangers back four would begin to dominate the Hearts forward line and Steve Penny might just change things here. And he's got the subject of the wrath of the crowd. No, once again we mentioned the referee and I think he's got that one right as well. The Hearts have wasted the position. Too deep from McKinley. He's certainly a very competitive player, Scott Nisbet, and grabbed the chance with both hands in Kuznetsov's absence. Kuznetsov and Mikhailichenko haven't been uh, playing for the Rangers' first team, but they did have three games recently for the Soviet Union, two against club sides, and won the European Championship qualifier in Norway last Wednesday. So they shouldn't be uh, too far short of full fitness. And a crowd of uh, getting over 23,000 in Tyne Castle. Penny. Getting the corner. A little moral victory there for the substitute. feel even better if Hearts can turn this set piece into the equaliser that they've been striving for since the 25th minute of the game. But Hakeley using his head defensively. Penny. This is McPherson in slightly unfamiliar territory. And the linesman says it's out. But a crowd of 22,700 in here, if Wallace Mercer has his way, the Hearts chairman, there will be a new stadium for the club on the outskirts of the city. Always difficult to turn plans into reality. turn the plans on the field into some fulfilment for Joe Jordan. Gary McCarr, given plenty of time to shoot. This could have been costly. The direction was encouraging. It needed to be stronger to beat Gould. Yeah, it just doesn't quite catch this one. Andy Gorham drives over to his right. Really no problem for Andy Gorham at all. Johnston. Hately will fight for everything. Which is an important quality in a forward. But it's not always one that's on view. Gordon, you've dominated a few uh, fainter hearts 
in real time. <laughs> really, it's really players, in particular midfield players tonight, are just aren't getting a chance to put their foot, their foot in the ball and knock the ball, knock the ball around because really the game's been um, so frantic and played at 100 miles an hour so far. Although good entertainment, nevertheless. Hey, click. And certainly giving everyone involved a run for their money because the destination the semi-final but the destiny is still not clear for either side Peter House just to take the corner Nisbet moving towards the near post Henry Smith moving off his line and he's dropped it Nisbet shoots and the rescuing was by Penny. There was no one left but Steve Penny, the substitute, after Henry Smith had a casualty here with his catch. Yes, yeah, a teasing cross by Hoistra, and just Henry Smith caught it, thudded into the ground, and that probably lost, lost grasp of the ball. Ferguson, it's a slip by Mackay. Two slips there that nearly cost Harps dearly because I feel if Rangers were to score another goal now, there would be no way back for Harps. Fergus. Miss that one, but it's consistent with his penalising of the raised foot in a dangerous way. Well, Scott Crabb in the wars, wars again. You know, um, Scott Crabb lowers his head, but really, referee correct him. Rangers saying that'll teach you to score the winner against us in the league. <laughs> Penny. Oh. Robertson and Andy Durham can't cope with the bounce. Well, he's made a contribution since he's come on, Steve Penn. He's won two corners, perhaps, and also had a goal line clearance. Oh, that was uh, Levine coming in from a penny corner. Penny showing that he can fit in snugly here. Crab hoping just to help that on, but it was the corner that caused the problem, first of all. Well, there have been a lot of uh, fouls in this game, but very few of them have been of a malicious nature, if any. What was more significant there was the deep corner from Steve Penny and the possibilities for Hearts at the far post. get a goal here certainly the corner offered uh, fuel to your argument yeah well that, that, that nearly proved very successful for Hearts I mean Craig Levine thumped a smashing header but unfortunately it landed on top of a Rangers head and a, a big a crowded penalty area let's have another word from David Livingston on the touchline on the far side 
frustration is building here in the Hearts bench for Joe Jordan. But the one thing, despite time running out, the one thing he is preaching is patience at set pieces, and we may see something from this one. Back to you. 11 minutes to go. A goal here could take us to extra time. The Rangers have other ideas. Astra the route upfield. Although there have been times where Rangers have had to defend. <laughs> David Robertson pushed forward again. And Gary Mackay coming in with a tackle. Rangers have never lost the will to add to their lead. But obviously the attacks mixed with a necessary amount of caution at this stage they try and ease themselves through frenetic closing stages. Ten minutes to go. Hearts nil, Rangers won. Stuart McCall for Rangers. Ian Ferguson going to the near post, and uh, Hearts just a little slow to go with him. McCall had spotted the run too. The sheer tempo of the match has taken its toll on a warm evening. behind Gary Stevens for once. No room to go any further. This bit sorted out. Yeah, the Hearts fans not too pleased with that tackle by Scott in but he's not the prettiest player to watch, but he's certainly effective. I mean, especially effective this evening. Mackay. He's getting some profit in getting the ball to Penny, and maybe more here. Steve Penny starting to skip down the right-hand side, and certainly Ian Baird, who's applauding now. Penny apologises for hitting the ball too deep. But it's the uh, kind of service that Baird in particular would thrive upon. And it's starting to come, but is it too late? Oh, and uh, Henry Smith won't prevent the corner here. Well, uh, he has done, but I don't think he should have done. The Hart fans were understandably silent. And there was no one from Rangers close enough to a field, really, with any justification. Lines the mast way on the far side. Derek Ferguson. in no position to rest on their laurels against opposition that have worked hard enough for Joe Jordan but can't find the penetrating moment to get back into the match and to stay in the Skull Cup Nisbet who comes from Edinburgh gets the ball away for Rangers for good purpose too Here's Spackman. Well, uh, his critics might say he's already got his one goal for this season, Nigel Spackman. But he's on the lookout for another here. Yeah, he's not a player that gets into a lot of goal-scoring positions because, if anything, he's probably the anchor man in the Rangers midfield, fetching and carrying from the Rangers back four. And much appreciated at Ibrox too. They're talking of extending his contract. Over Bear. Behind him waits Kraft. Behind Bear again is McKinley. 
Derek Ferguson, Mackay. He doesn't have to uh, supply the width anymore because Penny is here to do that. Mackay just about rescued the position. And then Miller comprehensively hands possession back to Rangers in the form of a free kick. And John Miller could well get himself booked for that. Douglas Hope has called him across. Well, it's really, I mean, it deserved to be booked here because in very late tackle from behind him, Mo Johnson, and really at this stage in the game, Hearts don't want to be giving away free kicks in areas that just aren't necessary. So, a booking for the former Blackburn Rover, who started his league career in England with the Chelsea. We're just about to start putting a little bit of pressure on the Rangers' defence here, and this, this, is, this is gave the Rangers players a much-needed breather. Johnston has shrugged off the physical effects of the challenge. Mentally, he's still got something to say about it. Passing John Miller now. Well, it really is glory or Skull Cup death for Hearts now. Rangers happy to have the ball in this area of the pitch. Crab screened out beautifully from Gott. Baird. Mackay. Now Crab. Rangers well aware that all their good team play could be wiped out if they slip. But the answer to that is to take on Hearts. But Peter Hauser has overdone it. Three minutes to go. Well, I think regardless of the result tonight, Joe Job must be delighted with the effort and commitment of his players this evening and indeed this season. But really, Rangers uh, continue to have a sensational run in this Skull Cup. And they're not averse to a battle either, really. They haven't been allowed to play silky soccer tonight, but they've rolled up their sleeves and battled. Yes, Rangers looking for their fifth Skull Cup in six seasons. And in the other season, they were the losing finalists. Beaten by Aberdeen. They were already out to the excellent Airdrie. Managed by Alec McDonald, of course. Formerly with Hart, Hatley took his own teammates by surprise then and nicking the ball back for Rangers so far forward. Stevens. Rangers good enough to keep the ball if they want to. Ferguson. Spackman. And Johnston. It's difficult for Hearts now. They've put themselves body and soul in this cup tie. A minute and a half on my watch. Plus stoppage time. The lead is only one. Hearts scored against Rangers. Still the only goal that Rangers have conceded all season. 80 seconds from the start of that league game here two and a half weeks ago. 
seconds in the referee's hands, but about now we might be 80 seconds from the finish. And I think it's those de defensive qualities that you mentioned there, Martin, that have seen Rangers through this difficult match tonight with Scott Nisbet and Richard Goff, both outstanding. Halster gaining ground on Mackay. No one following in initially for Rangers. Hately was rather marooned on the edge of the area. Morris Johnston was coming in, as well, you would expect. Hoistra missed a great chance for us in a similar situation in the league match. But Henry Smith, good save, stretch. Hately. Mark Hately's got Ian Ferguson inside him. And the Rangers are coming on strong in the closing stages. Really taking the steam out of Hearts, who haven't managed in the second half to match the quality of their play in the opening 20 minutes or so. A period that was punctured by Ali McCoy's crucial goal. For Rangers, revenge in the Skull Cup for their only defeat of the season so far. Ali McCoy's getting the goal and a triumph for Walter Smith's selection and his number two Archie Knox. Mark Hapley made it with that astute flick in the 25th minute of the game. And Hearts, well, it's their first loss after their splendid start to their campaign. Always a tricky tie this was going to be for Rangers, but they've come through it and they're into yet another Skull Cup semi-final and with Celtic and Dundee United going out at this stage as well as Hearts now, Aberdeen out in the previous round Walter Smith's side, strong favourites to go all the way again.